Are you free? It is a question to which you'll probably be tempted to answer, yes, of course. If you're not imprisoned in a jail, a victim of modern slavery, or affected by any other kind of higher power. And you'd be right. In the 21st century, most of the population of the globe is free. Free to speak as they wish. Free to worship whomever they like, and so on. All in all, freedom is considered one of the natural rights of human beings. And when anything threatens our freedom, there are national and international guardians to defend it, such as the European Union, the United Nations, and others. Since ages, freedom has made and is still making the headlines of newspapers. It has given hope. It has started and ended wars. It has won and lost battles. Human freedom has seemed to be an ideal for many ages, and nowadays it seems that the dream has come true for most of us. A question arises, however. In the era of freedom, are we truly free? Or rather, is the feeling of freedom we experience just a mere illusion? Before answering the question, let's dive a little deeper into the concept and talk about free will. You see, free will is the idea that people are able to choose how they act, and it is assumed that each of us is free to choose our behavior. In other words, humans are self-determined. For example, you can make a free choice based on your rational reasons as to whether to commit a crime or not, unless you're a child or insane, in which cases it's considered that you're unable to make a rational free choice. Basically, free will means that people are responsible for the things they do. Now, going back to the Bible, we know that God has endowed each and every one of us with free will, and thus we are responsible for our choices and for choosing what is best for ourselves. The question is then, why do we find ourselves in the impossibility of living the life of our dreams, or simply pursuing whatever it is that sets our soul on fire? It seems that we have succeeded in liberating ourselves from external authorities, such as dictators or foreign countries that wanted to conquer our territories. But in spite of this, we have surrendered our free will to other kinds of anonymous authorities, such as the public opinion and common sense. The famous philosopher John Stuart Mill provides us with some food for thought that reflects on the human nature and also gives us a sensible account on the way we see our freedom of choice nowadays. People ask themselves, what is suitable for my position? Even in what people do for pleasure, conformity is the first thing thought of. They like in crowds. They exercise choice only among things that are commonly done. In other words, as popular TV shows say, be yourself, but not like that. Although we are free to choose what is best for us, we agreed to trade that for pleasing others' expectations of us or for being accepted as a part of the majority. One of our modern limitations is given by our fear of being different, of standing out, or of standing up for ourselves. Although we admire those capable of doing so, we also believe that it's due to sheer luck or some sort of lucky start that they can do that. But here's a little secret. You can do it too. Of course, it will not be easy, but it all starts when you decide to stay true to your real self, instead of trying to satisfy the expectations that your parents, teachers, managers, or anyone has of you. Take a leap of faith and follow your dreams. It is our own responsibility to take the reins of our freedom and live the life we've always dreamt of. As Richard Lovelace writes in one of his famous poems, Stone walls do not a prison make, nor irons bar a cage. So, unless you are truly imprisoned, there is not much stopping you from living the life you've always wanted, but only the stone walls and iron bars your mind has created. So what are you waiting for? What's the next adventure? <laughs>